there are so many instant film cameras on the market today. And that's not a bad thing. It's freaking awesome. Don't get me wrong. But which one should you pick? Now that we're gearing up to head into the new year, I wanted to take a moment and discuss my top picks for cameras that you should be picking up in 2022. Let's dive into it. You know the type of guy that was a jock in high school but ended up becoming a huge nerd? You know, someone that's not afraid to make a fool of themselves on the internet. And someone that likes to shoot Polaroid a little too much. Did I say huge nerd? You know, just an ordinary, everyday guy. Well, that's me. I'm just another Chris. So, which cameras are my favorite? Well, I have a few. Now, you may remember, I did this last year as well, but there's been some new cameras that have come out since then, and let's see if they make the top list. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break it up into multiple categories. I'm gonna go Instax, and then go over my top picks for each format from Instax Mini, Square, and Wide, and then I'm gonna head on over to Polaroid, and it's a couple categories as well. We're gonna be talking about that modern iType cameras, and the vintage 600 cameras, and some honorable mentions. So it's gonna be pretty exciting. Let's dive in. To it with Instax Mini. So last year, this was my top pick, the Instax Mini 9. It's still a great, excellent camera, and I still recommend it, but there's actually two new cameras added to my lineup, and those are the Polaroid, yeah, the Polaroid Mio, Mio? I think it's Mio, and the Sharper Image. No other fancy name for it, just call the Sharper Image. All these shoot Instax Mini film. All threes I recommend, but there is one I would push you towards, over the three. Oh, and um, I've done videos on all three of these cameras, so I'll link those down below if you wanna learn more about them. I would send people to the Polaroid Mio Mio, whatever it's called, M-I-O, Mio, mainly because it has all the same features as the Instax Mini 9. However, you do have a little bit more control over your flash. Not by much, but it has a little bit. It's always on on the Mini 9. It's half on on the polaroid you can set it to always on or you can set it to auto flash which is a neat feature so if you're in a super bright area the flash might not go off and i don't know about you i'm not always a flash person i don't like going around flashing people and this is a super old camera too so this is like one of a kind they never did another one like this and in fact polaroid doesn't even make their branded version of this film anymore but it shoots insects mini photos so you can still get film all day long for this it's just not branded polaroid Moving on to the square format in the Instax line, and this was last year's pick, and it's still this year's pick. I really like this. It's a really great camera. Uh, it's compact. It's made by Lomography. This is the Lomo Instant Square Glass. I know, it's kind of a mouthful, uh, but it's really neat. It pops open just like so, and it shoots the square format. I did a video on this. Uh, if you want to learn all the ins and outs of this, full details breakdown, but I'm going to go over a couple quick awesome features that this has like a remote that's hidden right in the bottom of the camera we can take self timer or a uh, just shutter button in general really nice you can do long exposures it has some neat features on the back highly recommend this camera it folds down super nice and it's a glass lens so you're gonna get some super sharp pictures with this thing highly recommend it it's still the reigning king for me Instax wide. Now, uh, there's actually two cameras I recommend in this line. The other one I don't currently own. I did a video on it, but it was a loaner from Lomography. It was the Lomo Instant Wide. Really cool, really fun. In the video I made on it, I was a little harsh on it, but I actually really dig that camera. I don't own it, and I, I'll probably be picking one up for myself to keep uh, maybe next year, but it's kind of expensive. That's why I tend to send people to this bad boy. It's still something I use all the time and love this camera. This is the Fuji Instax Wide 200. Uh, it is the second model that they ever made. And honestly, all the Fuji Instax Wide cameras are all the same. They just kind of made different shells for them, but they all operate exactly the same. But you do pay a premium for the latest release one. <laughs> latest release, the thing came out, what, five years ago? Five plus years ago? Fuji has not updated their wide cameras ever. They need to, come on Fuji, get on it. But I recommend the older models because they're a lot cheaper. You can go on eBay and find them for like 20 bucks. I think that's what I paid for this guy. 
It's great, it's fantastic. And if you wanna learn more about it, like I said, there is a full breakdown video of this in the description below. Great camera for on a budget and honestly, just in general. I carry this around, <laughs> well, <laughs> it's a little hefty. It's a little thick with two C's, but I do carry this around in my bag as a normal everyday carry. All right, moving right along to Polaroid. First, I'm gonna start off with the modern Polaroid cameras, which is considered the iType cameras. This is in this category of its own. It's still an iType camera and it's Polaroid, but there's no other format like this on the market. And this is the only camera on the market that shoots the format. Um, and yeah, this is the Polaroid Go. I didn't think I was gonna like this camera. Uh, the format's really small, but the more I've used it, I actually really enjoy this little camera. Fits in your pocket for reasonably, and it's just little fun photos, and it's the first of its kind to try and bring cheaper Polaroid film to the market. They really wanted to compete with the Fuji Instax, like mini slash square line. It's kind of in between those. I love to use this camera to give away photos, because it's a fairly inexpensive. You get 16 photos for 20 bucks. That's still, you know, not necessarily cheap. But when I pull these out at parties and hand them out, people just love it. And I really do dig this little camera. I tape full box cameras. Wait, what the freak is this one doing here? Get that. That's better. So these are what Polaroid technically offers besides that black sheep. This Polaroid now is the one I recommended last year and honestly still recommend this camera. Fantastic camera, it's really, really great. It's super simple to use. They add a touch of modern to it with the little digital readout on the back of it. And it's a little clunky in some areas, like getting exposure compensation and whatnot, uh, but it's still an excellent camera. It has autofocus, great camera. You can't go wrong with this. But this year I've actually been pushing people to pick up the older models. This is the One Step 2 and this is the One Step Plus. Videos and all these have been done as well. And I recommend going into next year, maybe looking at some of these older ones. They have some great features and they work fantastic. And honestly, in my opinion, my favorite camera like imagery outside of some other cameras that are coming up that I'll get into in a minute is the One Step 2, especially the Polaroid Stranger Things edition. Something with the lens on this, it just gives this unique look that I just dig so much. And plus it still has some uh, physical buttons and dials and switches on this thing that they got rid of on the newer ones. It's fantastic. I really love this. Uh, it's a great pickup. And since they're older, they're gonna be a lot cheaper. The One Step Plus I recommend over that new Black Sheep camera that came out this year, the now plus, we don't talk about it here but it has Bluetooth connectivity. You can still use it as full manual control. You do have to manually switch your lenses, but that's a kind of a plus on its own. And I explained that a little bit in the previous video that actually just released fairly recently, but you still have all the cool physical buttons on it. It's really great and the images are fantastic. I highly recommend and go into next year, considering looking up these guys as well, of course, as this modern one. It's great. Polaroid vintage cameras. This one's a tricky one. There's two categories for the vintage cameras. There's SLRs and then there are the box type cameras. Let's start with the box type cameras. There are tons of options out there for the box type. Some of them come in fun, cool, fancy colors and schemes and skins and all sorts of stuff. Uh, some come with autofocus, some come with these flashes that you pop on and off. Some of them are all combined into one unit. Really great uh, selection of these cameras, which they shoot 600 film, which means there's a battery in the pack of film with some exceptions. Like this one right here actually shoots SX70 film, but I don't really send people to these ones because you have to use SX70 film, which isn't readily available. You have to pretty much get it straight from Polaroid or hopes that a film photography store carries it. However, you can still shoot 600 film in here, but you have to fumble around with that ND filter, which can get annoying. I send people more towards the Sun 660. This is basically the Polaroid now. It has autofocus, you have exposure compensation, you have a flash, you know, sort of folds down. It's not really compact. You have control over the flash. You can shoot it with the flash or without the flash. It's a great camera. And the only difference between this one and the now is the fact that it shoots 600 film, not eye type film. It's still a reigning king of the Polaroid box type camera. You really can't go wrong, but honestly, any of them are gonna be great. It's really up to your choice. Like, like this one doesn't have autofocus. It's zone focusing, a close up lens built in. You just slide it over the lens and you can get like a little bit closer than normal, but you have to manually do that yourself. This one chooses it for you. So 
it's this one right here is still my kind of my reigning king the sun 660. now let's move on to kind of the premium and the most sought after polaroid cameras on the market and that is the sx70 slr cameras these are my favorite cameras honestly if you're just getting into instant photography I would not start you here. I would start you, well, with an Instax camera. It gets your feet wet, see if you even like it. It's cheap on film and whatnot. But once you start shooting it and you like it and you're ready to take the next leap, I might look into this. This is, this is where I would send you after you've already gotten your feet wet with some of these other cameras. These are kind of like the flagships and they range in price wildly. Pay anywhere from uh, 50 to $100 for these and as high as 1000 but the reason that they, you're paying so much for them is because these are glass SLR cameras, which means it's a single lens reflex. So you know what a DSLR is? It's basically that, just not digital. <laughs> so this is how it works. You wanna take your picture, you look through the viewfinder, which is located right here. When you look through here, there's mirrors that bounce here, then down, then back, and then through the lens. You're looking right through the actual lens, so your framing is gonna be exactly what you see. That's plus number one. But also, you can manually focus your lens like an actual camera. You got a little dial here, and you're physically seeing through the lens and seeing where you are framing and where your focus is gonna be. You can get as close as to like 10 inches with this thing. Super fantastic. This guy here is the same thing, but it has sonar autofocus. Super cool. However, it doesn't come off, so it's kind of more bulky. And I dropped mine recently and chipped off a chunk of it. It's plastic. This camera is all metal, like all metal except for that part. This camera is plastic. And the film that these use is SX70 film, which you can still get, like I said earlier, or you can use 600 film with an ND filter. There are options out there that you can actually send your cameras in to be converted to shoot 600 film natively. And this camera has had that done. So this one, I just slap in a normal 600 film with no ND filter and it's fantastic. And which there's a lot more pros to that. Then I still need to do a video explaining that fully, but that's the route to go. Now, another thing you might notice, there's no flash on these. You have to add them to them to use the flash, which can be annoying. But there is an option for you out there if money is no object, or if you get lucky like I did find one for basically free pay 20 bucks for this camera you're about to see and that's this guy this is the beast i call it and longtime viewers should know that this is the polaroid slr 680 uh this bad boy is the cream of the crop polaroid slr cameras it has it all with no sacrifices it shoots 600 film natively it has autofocus it has a glass lens and it has a flash it tends to come with a hefty price tag. They're pretty rare. People seek this camera out more than anything. So they're kind of hard to find. And when you do find them, they're very expensive. You're going to be looking to pay anywhere from $350 upwards of $1,000, depending on condition. This one's pretty rough. But it has issues. It had issues when I got it. But that's all we're talking about today. These, though, are my ultimate favorite cameras that you can buy in instant photography worlds in the Polaroid line. And even outside of Polaroid, just in general, the craftsmanship, the way that these are built, the way that they function is just crazy magic. And these were made in the 70s, except for this one, this one came out in the 80s. That's why it's called SLR 8680. There's a 690 of this, same camera, just came out in the 90s. Now I wanna throw out an honorable mention. It's a category of its own. It's technically not a camera per se, but it is instant photography and it's made by Polaroid. And that is the Polaroid Lab. A lot of people give this a lot of hate, but man, this year I have used the crap out of it and I highly recommend that you guys do it too. It's a great tool to have in your arsenal as a creative. Don't care what people say about, oh, you're just taking your cell phone photos and making them and just printing them out. It's not a real instant photo, but who cares about what people say about this thing? Art is art. But what I've been using this for, recreating Polaroids that I have seen in some of my favorite TV shows, like The Office, Parks and Rec, and I have some from My Name is Earl that I'm working on. They use Spectra film a lot in that, so I'm gonna have to fudge it a little bit because, you know, Spectra isn't around anymore. And I did a video explaining a lot of this already. I'll leave that down below for you. But consider, you know, doing some research on this. This is actually really fun, and it's a nice tool to have in your creative arsenal. So there you have it. This is my 2022 lineup of favorite cameras. So going into the next year, 
if I were to recommend anything, it'd be these guys right here. And you can find helpful information in the description below, like links to pick some of these up. These are gonna be the hardest ones to track down because I mean, you're gonna have to source eBay, offer up Facebook. Um, sometimes Polaroid sells these on there, but they refurbish them and they're really expensive. And links to videos that I've done on these cameras to help you even further learn about the camera and make a confident buying decision. Which one is your favorite? Do you have any of these? Let me know in the comments below or let me know which one you're planning on picking up. Let's chat. If you have any questions, you can always reach out to me over on Instagram, active over there quite often or consider joining the uh, Discord. So be sure to check it on out and I'll see you in the next video. Now, get out there, make some art. I hope one day Polaroid brings back a folding like SX70 style camera, but uses the Polaroid Go film. Doesn't have to be an SLR. It could still basically be this camera but it pops open and fits in your pocket even slimmer. Oh, come on, Polaroid, get on that. That'd be so cool. But I'm a dreamer. Let's move on.